Hi, this is Darren Lyle. This is a compilation of several videos from my newest Blender training course that I'm working on now. If you become a member of my YouTube channel, you get access to these and more than 500 Blender training videos. So click the join button and check it out. Hope you enjoy. To begin texture painting here in Blender, we're going to need to do a bit of setup with the user interface. So let's go over to the texture paint tab here. And it's looking pretty strange here. And that's okay. All we need to do is get rid of this normal map that we just used. So I'll just click on the X here. And then we need to deal with the strange color here on the character. And anytime Blender is giving you this strange, ugly, pinkish color, all it's trying to tell you is that something is missing. So since we're here in the texture paint tab in texture paint mode, it just means that we're missing a texture paint layer. So we need to create one of those. I'm going to come up here and go to viewport shading so we can see the material and textures again. I'm going to create a new window here again, just like we did in the UV editor. And I'll change this to a shader editor. I'll hit the N key to close that panel. And also I'd like to see the UVs down here in this image editor layer. You can see here that we've got the image editor open instead of the UV editor. But to be able to see the UVs here in the image editor, we're going to have to do one thing back in the UV editor. And instead of switching back and forth here, I'm just going to go over to the UV editing tab here. And let's turn on sync right here. Now that we've done that, if we go back to the texture paint tab, we can see those UVs here. Now we've got that normal map here again. I'll just hit the X. There we go. Okay, so now we can see the UVs here. Let's change from view to paint mode here. Okay, now what I think I'd like to do is take this color here of the material and create a texture map of that same color. So how do we do that? Well, what let's do first of all is let's go over to the skin color right over here. Here's the skin material, and there it is here. Let's now go over to the active tool tab here. And when we do, we can see we've got our texture brush here, this texture draw brush, which is right up here. We've got our color palette, which is here. We've got our blending mode, which is up here on the top. So as you can see, we've got many of the tools in this panel over here are at the top of the screen. And I'm gonna be using these up here at the top mainly. So the first thing let's do is create a new texture slot. I'm gonna middle mouse button, click and drag, and drag this whole top bar over so we can see our texture slots here. Now, the texture slots are right here in this panel. But what I'm gonna do is come up here, make sure skin has been chosen, and click on the plus here. Now I'm gonna choose base color, and notice that the material name has been put here and then the base color. Let's change the resolution to 4096, since that's the resolution of all the other textures that we've created. And let's change this to black. I'm just going to grab this and pull it all the way down. And there we go. I'll leave the generated type at blank, and let's click OK. And when we do that, it creates an image texture over here and places it connected to our material, our skin material. And you can see it here in the 3D view. Now let's uh, pull it down here. Let's pull this menu down and select it here. And we need to zoom out since it's 4096. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the fill brush here to fill that entire material of all the skin with that skin color. I'm going to middle mouse button click and drag back over here. And I want to put that skin color in here, but we can't see it. What I'm going to do is just grab this and unhook it so we can see that color. Now I'm going to come back to that color swatch for the fill tool here and click here, click on the eyedropper, sample that color right here, and notice it loads it up here. Now, the reason why I switched to the fill tool before I did this is because this swatch is for each of the brushes. So if I go back to the draw brush, you can see it's white. But if I go to the fill, that's where that color is. So the color swatch is for each one of the brushes. All right, so let's hook this back up here. Then all I need to do is click on the object 
and it'll fill that material with the skin color. Here we go. There you go. Now, that worked. However, there's some strangeness to the Blender texture painting tools. It's not like uh, Photoshop or Krita. It's a little quirky. So I just want to point out something that it did. Look down here. It added that skin color to the shoelaces. Now, we may never know why. <laughs> if we go over to the Cori Color PNG, you can see it here. Look. There's that skin color put right over that texture. It's just weird. I'm not sure why it does this kind of thing, but we can make it work. I'm going to press Control Z and undo that fill tool. There we go. And I'll switch back to my skin base color here. What let's do now is let's use this tool right up here, Paint Mask Tool. So if I click this, it masks the whole object. And what we need to do is select only the faces that we want the fill tool to work on. So if I tab into edit mode, now I can choose what faces we want it to fill. So I'm gonna hit the L key and choose this. Notice that in select linked, I've got seam chosen. I wanna keep it like that because, let me show you why, if I, I'm just hitting the L key here, but inside here, the mouth hasn't been selected, and that's because it's separated by a seam. All right, so I'll also come in here and choose the L key here, here, on the legs, and this arm, and the hand, so that now this is the only thing that is going to be filled. I'll hit the Tab key, and now with the fill tool here, if we click the object, it'll only fill what's been selected. You can see here, it hasn't been filled here, or if we go back to our color, it hasn't been filled here. So that's good, that's what we want. So sometimes the texture paint tool can be a little bit quirky, but usually Blender has some sort of tool to help you out. All right, I'll turn off this paint mask here. And then what we need to do is save this image. Now, as I said, texture painting in Blender is not quite like Photoshop or Krita where they have those virtual layers. Here in Blender, a texture layer is actually an image file on your hard drive, like a PNG or a JPEG. This file has to be saved to your hard drive before you close this scene or else you could lose it. So what we need to do you see this little asterisk here. We need to click on image, click on save as, and find a place to save it. I'm gonna put it in my textures folder here, and I'll call it skin base color, that's fine. So I'll click save, and there it goes. Now it's been saved as a file on my hard drive. And the only thing that's being saved here in the Blender scene file is the link to that file. So you can see here there is no asterisk. That means it's been saved. So keep an eye on that image menu item there as you're creating texture layers. Now that we've got that even skin color on, let's go in and paint over that some redness on the cheeks, maybe on the ears, around the nose, and that kind of thing. And also maybe some color on the fingernails. So we're gonna need another texture slot. I'll just slide this over again. And here in the texture slots pull down, let's make sure we have skin chosen, and then we'll add a new texture slot. We'll create another base color. And for this, let's call this um, skin, instead of base, let's call it details. Uh, let's make it 4096 again, just like the last one. And for the color, let's change that to black, just like we did. But for this one now, since it's going to go over the existing one, let's take this alpha channel all the way down. There we go. So now we've got black here and clear here. And that will allow us to see through the texture image with that alpha channel so that we can still see the skin color as we paint over it. I'm going to leave the generated type at blank once again and click OK. And there we go, here it is. 
I'll just move this over here like this. Now we need to mix these two together. So what let's do is let's create a mix RGB node. I'll press Shift A, go to Color, and choose Mix RGB. And this I will just drop right on top of that connection, and it'll connect it up. Let's grab this color and drag it right up into here. And then let's change this from Mix to Add. There we go. So now it looks the same as it did before, but now we're going to be able to paint over it. So let's uh, come over here and pull this menu down, and we'll find our skin details right here. There it is. Let me zoom in to the face. And with this node selected, we can begin painting on it. I'm going to use the draw brush instead of the fill brush for this. And let's zoom in on the face here and see what we can do. How about we begin with the lips? Let me uh, slide this toolbar over again. Let's go into the color swatch and I'll just take this down to a red kind of like this. I'll take the strength down some and this time I am going to use a pen and tablet. It's just so much easier to paint strokes with a pen and tablet. And I just have a Wacom Intuos Pro. It isn't a high-end uh, tablet or anything, but it is it is good for this kind of work. Once again, you don't absolutely need it. You can use a mouse, but I think you'll be a lot happier with the results if you can use a pen and tablet. All right, so now that I've got all of this in place, I can just click and drag and draw, and you can see I can paint directly on the 3D model, and it appears down here in the image editor, right here. Now, that's not very good. Let's undo that with Control Z. And let's see if we can get it a little bit better than that. What I will do is hit the F key, and in doing that, I can move the pen back and forth and change the radius of the brush, so maybe something like this. And I can also press Shift F and move it back and forth and change the strength, so maybe something like this. All right, let's give this a try. Oh, and also what I'll do, let me move this toolbar over here. I'm gonna turn on symmetry here to mirror from one side to the other. I'll use the X axis so that when I paint on one side, it also happens on the other. And I'm just gonna very lightly paint on here just the hint of the lips. I don't want it to be too strong here. And let's do that. Then what I can also do is zoom in here change the size of the brush with the F key, and I can paint the inside of the lips in here. I'll turn the strength up and I'll get this part right inside here. So that when he opens his mouth, there's color inside there to match the outside of the lips. So I just wanna paint this here. Now I can increase or decrease the uh, strength of this by Using this slider here, I can drag it up and make it stronger, drag it down, make it lighter, but I think I'll maybe move it right about here. And it's not quite the way I want it here. I'd like to take some of that away. And the way we can do that is to use the Erase Alpha blending mode here. So I'll choose this, and then we should be able to pull some of that off of there like that. See how we can erase that a bit, something like this. There we go. I'll switch back to mix, and I just want to add a little bit of color right in there. Let me bring that strength back down again, right in here. All right, that's, that's really all I want there. In fact, that may be a little bit too much. We'll see. Um, as I said, I can always bring it down a bit like this, and that may be what I need to do, but let me get the other parts in as well. What I mean by the other parts is maybe some red around the eyes, the nose, the forehead, the ears, and that kind of thing. So I'm going to just change the red here, make it a little bit uh, different right here. And then I'll increase the size of the brush, bring the strength down a bit and that uh, symmetry is still on. So if I just paint a little bit around the eyes here, you can see it happening over in the UV map here. 
But I just want a little bit around the eyes, just a little bit. I will uh, come in here and paint a little bit more of this. Hit the F key, bring that down some. Paint a little bit more inside there. Because if we pull the eyelids down for a blink or widen them out some in animation, we want to be sure that all of this is pretty much the same color inside here. Okay. Uh, let's also add that to the nose. I'll make this a little bit bigger. Maybe let me bring this out some. Maybe right in here around the nose, maybe on top. You can see it over here. Um, maybe a little bit on the forehead up here. Uh, a little around the inside of the mouth. That may be a little bit too much. Let me bring that brush down and right along that smile line there. Uh, let's give him some rosy cheeks as well. There we go. All right. And then, um, oh, the ears. Let's do that. Add some red to that in there. And once again, if we feel like it's too much, we can come back over here, erase alpha. Uh, maybe bring the strength up just a bit, but we can just go across there and remove some of that. We can do it over here as well, like this. Just back it off a bit. And maybe in here, I can back that off, and the eyes, back that off. And notice here that I didn't get the other eye because we don't have mirroring here in the image editor. So I'll hit F and bring this down, switch back to mix and kind of fill this in here. Now, once again, I can bring this up or bring it down. So I think maybe I'll bring it down just a bit like this. I think I'll back off the color on the lips too. Erase alpha, bring that strength down, increase the size of the brush and just back that off just a little bit. So it isn't quite so strong. There we go. And now the fingernails, let's do the fingernails too. And I think what we're gonna find with the fingernails is that these are so small, we're gonna have trouble painting them here. Let's take a look at the UV map over here. Let's zoom in to these fingers here. I think we're gonna have to paint it here in the image editor. If I make this uh, brush really small like this, and let's um, sample this color of the skin. And then let's make it a little bit redder like this. Something like that. Now if we zoom in here and try and paint, we don't really see anything. Oh, I've got Erase Alpha on. Let me uh, switch over to the Mix Blend mode and try that again. So here, let me just show you. If we paint on here, that doesn't really work too well. But if we come into here, and paint here, you can see that there. Let me just get that again. There we go. This one, there. So it's just very subtle. I'm just adding just a slight bit of color to this. That's all. You can see that there. As I paint them here, they pop in there. And on that thumb, let's get it on that thumb here. Just move over to here and paint that. There it is. All right, let's go do it on the other side as well. Because once again, we aren't mirroring here in the image editor. So I'll just uh, paint here and each one of these. And then if we zoom out and come over here, we can see we've got just a little bit of color on each one of these. You can see there's just, there's just a slight bit of difference. That's all I want very subtle. Now one last thing before we go on to the next video, we need to save this file. See here we've got an asterisk. Let's click on image, save as, and in our textures folder here, let's go ahead and save this skin details. Save as, and there we go. Now we've got that saved as well. Also, as you increase the number of these external image files that you have, you should also consider coming over here to File and External Data and turning on Automatically Pack into Blend File.
And if you turn that on and then save, control S here, that image file will be packed into the blend file so that if you take that blend file, that blender scene file, and use it on another computer, you won't also have to take those images over as well. They'll be already packed into the file. It's kind of like a zip file almost. So as you work with textures and image files here in Blender, I suggest you turn this external data packing function on in case you have to use this blend file on another computer. All right, now let's work on the freckles. To do that, I'm gonna to need to create a texture to add to our brush here in Blender to paint the freckles. Because I don't wanna go through and click and paint every single freckle. I want a brush that can put down more than that in one stroke. So what I'd like to do is create a new brush in Krita that we can then bring into Blender and use to paint the freckles. So let's go over to Krita and I will click on new file. And we've got these uh, texture templates here in Krita. And I like these a lot because you can just very quickly choose a texture of a certain size and start working immediately. And I like this 2048 one. I'm going to choose this one. Now it has a gray background, but I'm just going to hide that because I want it to be see-through. I want to be able to see through the parts that I don't paint. The brush that I like to use for this is this one right here, this, uh, this kind of round, um, almost a Q-tip kind of thing uh, brush here. And I will put the color at almost a black, kind of a brown, almost black over here, something like that. And I've got my opacity at 100 and the flow at 100. So if I use the uh, bracket keys, the keys by the P key on the keyboard, to increase and decrease the brush size, I can just click. And the more I click, the darker it gets. And let's just add a few of these around this whole template, around this whole page here. So I'll add those, and then I'm going to reduce the size a bit and do it a little bit more. So we just kind of get a random smattering of uh, little dots here. Things like this, and maybe I'll make it even a little smaller and do some more. Like this, all around in here. And maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger, make it, maybe make one over here, a couple that aren't quite as dark, something like this. And uh, yeah, I think that's probably pretty good. Maybe I add one right in here. So I'm just trying to get, as I said, a random collection of these things, something like this. But now that we have this done, let's go ahead and export this out. I'm gonna to go to File and Export. And let's call this uh, Freckles Brush. Here we go. And I'm using a PNG here so that we can see through it so that we have an alpha channel that's clear on the parts where we didn't paint anything. So I'm gonna click Save, there we go. And now let's go back to Blender. And here in Blender, let's bring in that texture for our brush. So over here in this panel, let's once again ensure that we have skin selected in the materials. Come down here to the texture properties and let's create a new texture for our brush. Let's click new and we have type image. Let's click open and let's go into that textures folder and here it is, freckles brush. Open that, and you can see it there. Now we need to add it to the brush. To do that, let's come up here and move this over, and we wanna add it right here under texture. Let's pull this down right here and click this. Let's give it a new name so we know for sure. We'll call this Freckles Brush again. There we go. And so if we pull this down, you can see that's been loaded here. And while we're here, let's change the mapping from tiled to random. Here we go. And let's ensure that this random check mark is selected. Now let's come over here to the stroke, change it from space to dots. Okay. So we've got the brush all loaded up with our texture. Now we need something to paint on. We need to create a new texture slot here to actually paint on. 
So let's come over here to our texture slots. Make sure skin is selected and let's create a new one right here. We'll choose our base color and we will call this skin freckles. And once again, we'll change this to 4096. And we'll change our color here to black and reduce the alpha channel. There we go. Now let's click OK. And here it is here. Let's put it in place. And I will take these two and drag them over a bit. Let me do that. Because what we need to do is add another RGB node right in here. Let's press Shift A, Color, Mix RGB right here. Let's add this to that right there. Now it, it doesn't look quite right, so let's change this to add and we can see the color the way it's supposed to be, right? Let's also come down here and change it to skin freckles. There we go. So now you would think we'd be able to paint our freckles, but if we paint now, we can't see anything. So what let's do is let's change this to mix and let's take this alpha channel right here and drop it into that socket right there now if we come over here to our character let me hit the f key and make this a little bit smaller something like this i'm going to turn off symmetry here and then if we click and drag look freckles so they don't need to be quite that Strong though, let's uh, come over here and bring the strength down some like this. And I might make it a little bit bigger. So now we could just come through here and begin drawing out our freckles. I can just use the brush to paint on freckles of random orientation and varying sizes because we painted them in varying sizes in Krita. And I can maybe bring some up here like this. There we go. So that's an easy way to be able to paint freckles onto your character. And you can, of course, make them stronger or lighter, whatever you think. Um, we could come over here to erase alpha and also remove the texture from our brush here like that. And then we can erase them or make them a little bit lighter like this. See how you can paint them away. And then we can once again go back to mix, add that uh, texture back on, and then we can begin painting them back however we like. So you can go through and paint them on, use erase alpha to make them lighter or erase them completely. And for me, I think I want to Erase the freckles right up here on the bottom of the eyelid. I don't think that looks very good. So I will change to erase alpha and remove my texture here. And then I'll make this a little bit smaller. Take the strength up a bit and just paint out these right along the bottom eyelid. I don't think I want that there. There we go. All right, there's one last thing that I'd like to do before we finish up our texturing here, and that is to add a couple stripes to the t-shirt. So basically, we're gonna be going through the same process. Let's come back up here to our active tools, and instead of skin, let's scroll up and choose the shirt material. And here's the node tree for that particular material. And what I think we should do is add another texture slot to this and use that RGB mix node in the same way that we did before. Let me move these out of the way. Just move these down here. So first of all, let's uh, slide over to the texture slots right here. With shirt selected, let's add another texture, a base color. We'll call this shirt, uh, how about stripes? And we'll once again change this to match the resolution of the other textures, which is 4096. We'll change the color to black, and we'll drag this alpha channel all the way down. There we go. So let's click OK, and here it is. Now, 
Let's create a mix RGB node with Shift A and color mix RGB, and let's drop that into here. And instead of add, instead of the add blending mode here, let's keep it on mix the way we did for the freckles. And let's drag this over to the second slot and take this alpha channel and drop it right onto the factor socket right there. Now, the reason why we're doing it this way instead of um, using add when we added the um, red color for the cheeks and the lips is because in that method, Blender is reading black as the alpha channel. And so we wouldn't be able to paint dark things like the freckles or the stripes since it would see black or dark colors as clear. So we have to use this method here to apply darker colors. So let's come over here now and select that shirt stripes. Here it is. I'll zoom into the shirt area. We need to remove that freckles brush texture from our brush here. So let's just hit the X. There we go. If we go to the front view, and I'm just using the mouse now, we can click and drag and there's our paint stroke. Now we need to do a couple things here. Let me press Control Z to undo that. Let's uh, come over to our color swatch and I want to grab the eyedropper and sample a color off of the t-shirt. So here's our blue. And then I'm just going to take that and make it a little bit darker like that. Just so we have a color kind of like this. Let's take the strength up a bit. And I'm also going to turn off pressure sensitivity since I'm not using the pen and tablet and I want this stripe to be strong and clear. So if I click and drag here, you can see we're getting there. However, what I also want to do is come over here and adjust the stroke. Right here, let's change this from dots to line. There we go. Now, if we take the spacing all the way down, we can click and drag a line across the shirt here, and it will create a stripe. Now that's pretty good, but that's a little too big. I don't think I want that. I'm going to hit the F key and bring it down just a little bit. And I'm going to click and drag and bring it across like this. Better. Okay, let me press Control Z. And I'm going to bring that size up just a little more with the F key. And I'm going to begin just a little bit lower under the arm, right about here. Drag that straight across and try that. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Let's do that again just below here. Let's try it here to here. That's not bad. Okay. You can see the paint strokes going down over here on the UVs. Let's now spin around to the back side with Control 1. And let's do the same thing. I'd like to move the light just a bit. So let's come over here and pull this down, this viewport shading menu. And let's click and drag in the rotation slider here to turn the light around so we can see the back a little bit better. And then once again, I'll begin here and drag across like that. And then one below it like this. See how this works. Okay, now let's hit the three key and let's do the same thing from the side. I'm going to begin here, drag across. No, that's a little bit too high. I'm going to undo that. Click, drag. Eh, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to click, drag like this. All right, let's go around to the other side, Control 3. Let's do the same thing right here and right here. Okay, so we've got that. I'm going to go back to the front view, and now I want to make a line in the middle, kind of a gray line in the middle there. I'm going to take the rotation of the light down to zero. Let's reduce the size of the brush, and let's take the color. Uh, I'll take the saturation and hue all the way down. And let's bring the value up so we get kind of a gray here, something like this. And then let's try this. Click right in between here, drag straight through. 
and there we go. All right, let's go to the back, Control-1, do the same thing back here, like this, and then three key for the side view. That looks like it's a little bit too high. Let me uh, go back, Control-1, and try and make that just a tad bit lower. See if I can do that, like that. Press the three key, yeah, there we go. And I'm gonna drag a line through here. Okay, control three, drag a line through here. Uh, that's a little bit off. I'll try again. No, let's try this. That's pretty good. All right, so now I'd like to clean it up a bit. I think we could clean it up on the bottom here just a bit. So, and on the top up here. So what I'll do is go from mix to erase alpha. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. And now let's just uh, come down here, click and drag across the bottom. And that cleans that up quite a bit, that's nice. Let's do that along the top. Clean that up. Control one. Let's do that up here. A uh, little bit too much. Let me try again. There we go. One down here. Pretty good. Let's see how that looks. Uh, maybe we ought to clean it up on the side here. Let's try this. Oh, too much. There we go. I'll go around to the other side with Control-3. Let's try and clean this up just a smidge. All right, and now what we can do is come up here into the underarms right in here, and we could begin to erase some of this. We could use the line tool like that, or we could come back to the stroke and change back to space here. And clean that up there like that. Let's also come back over on this one and clean this up. There we go. All right, we've now got our stripe on the t-shirt. And the nice thing about this is that you can still see that normal map bump texture underneath it. I think that's kind of nice. It, it continues to be a part of the shirt because of that texture. And we can, of course, come in here and adjust the roughness and the specular as we need to. So we can do that. And there we go. All right, now that the textures are pretty much complete, let's one last time take this new texture and let's save as, and we will save it in our textures folder as shirt stripes right here. And now, in the next part of the course, I think we'll begin working on giving this kid some hair. So that's coming up next.